long and shaking my head and now I've done exactly the same thing. Okay, so now I'm sharing my screen. I can see that whizzing away quite happily. Okay, so first you need to be asking yourself why you want to get certified in either uh, the Google products or the Microsoft products. And primarily for me, it was to prove my abilities. Uh, I like to have certificates. I like to have uh, that, that, that knowledge that I, I would be able to prove if I'm ever asked what my skills and experiences are. So that's why I went down the, uh, the, the route of um, Google, Google Classroom. Uh, sorry, sorry, Google Training. And the, um, the confidence that I gained from that meant that then I was able to push myself more into other locations across the college. So I was already the staff coach across the college. But it was helpful then having that uh, the certification behind me to start pushing myself more into those areas that demanded a little bit more educational technology. So that was something I was able to bring into that role. The other is about learning some new things. By doing the, the courses, whether you do the Microsoft or you do the, the, the Google courses, you learn things that you didn't know that those products could do. And what they do over time is they help save you time and save you money. So they're going to save you time in your in your preparation, they're going to save you time in dealing with students, they're going to save you time in your marking. But they're also going to save the college or your school money because you end up using paperless classrooms. So the computing and business department that I work in, our computing department is 100% paperless. We use virtually no paper whatsoever in our teaching and learning. And uh, all the way through our internal verification processes and all the way through our holiday bookings and everything else, all of that is done through paperless systems. So we're 100% paperless. The uh, business department, which is closely aligned to computing, they are, I would say, probably 80%, maybe nearly 90% paperless. They still do some things around, around paper. Um, across the college, we, we've got varying degrees of paperless um, money saving activities going on but probably one of the most impactful money saving areas that we we made was actually with our governors we've got 15 16 governors and every month they would come in for their governors meetings and they would be given hundreds of pages to read about governance and finance and estates and all sorts of other issues safeguarding and quality and we, we were producing something like 200, maybe 250 pages per governor for them to sit and go through. So one of the first things we did was created a Google Classroom for, for the governors and then created sub classrooms for the subcommittees. And now everything is distributed through the, to the governors through Google Classroom, Google Doc Sheets and Slides, so that now we're not producing that thousands and thousands of um, uh, sheets of paper every, every month. The other aspect is being part of a community and community is very important when we're moving to this online and remote learning. Being part of a community means that when you come up with a problem, when you come face to face with something that you can't solve, you can go online, you can get in touch with some of the, the chat groups, you can go onto some of the private Facebook groups, you can go onto Google's own Google chat groups and you can ask that question or that quite question might have been asked before. And if you do ask us a question, within minutes, you're going to be getting a response to how to solve that problem. So being part of that community does help you um, with problem solving, but it also helps you with something where you've got a sounding board for you to go and say, I'm thinking about this idea. Has anybody done something similar? What were the pitfalls? So moving forward now, we're going to start looking at each of the, uh, the, the levels and uh, the, the exams that you can take. So I'm starting with Google. No, no, no reason why that's the, the case. It's just, it just is. So we could have easily start with Microsoft. So with the Google Level 1 and Level 2 Educator Qualifications, uh, this proves that you've got a good understanding of using the Google tools within education. So that means that you're not just using it in the classroom, but you're also using it for your prep and for your planning. And you're not just using it in, in, the, in the classroom in your teaching. So level one just proves that you've got a good understanding of those tools. It's not particularly difficult. If you are already using Google Doc Sheets and Slides and you know a little bit about how to um, put a video onto YouTube and you know how to add things to a, a Google Diary, 
Google, Google Calendar, you know how to create the event, then you're probably going to be okay passing that exam. There's uh, a little bit of learning to do, and I'll, I'll come on to that in a second, but it's not too onerous as an exam to achieve. The level two qualification goes a little bit further than that. So now what it's looking at is can, not only can you use these tools in education, but can you start to blend them together? Can you mash them up in some way? So it might ask you to take a Google Doc and a calendar and produce a, um, a timetable from your calendar and transport it into your Google Doc, Google Doc. It might ask you to create a form that automatically fills and distributes to an email distribution list. All of those things are fairly easy to do once you know how to do them. And behind all of that is there, there is some, some learning to do. So whether it's level one or level two, there's around about 12 hours of online learning provided for you to get to grips with the tools and the techniques. Now, if you've been using them for some time, the chances are you won't need to use all of that 12 hours. For instance, two years ago when I set my level one and my level two, I um, have been using Google Google products for three years or so. So I was already quite au fait with, with a lot of those devices and those applications and those tools. So I was able to run through particularly the level one, very quickly. I probably spent less than an hour, hour and a half looking through some of the some of the documentation. The level two required a little bit more because the level two focuses more on the application of those tools rather than the tools themselves. So the level two took a little bit more uh, reading around and, and thinking about how they were expecting you to use the tools because that's what the exam's asking. Then once you've carried out that training, the, the exams are three hours long. Now, the exams are online. They're run through something called ProctorU, and the scenario and multiple choice based. Particularly level one, there's lots of multiple choice questions with a couple of basic scenarios. So it might ask you, in, under this circumstance, what tool would be best to use and why? And then when it comes to the scenarios, it will give um, a dummy situation where you are creating, a, for instance, a, a Google Classroom, and within that Google Classroom, you have to invite some students to it. You've then got to create a calendar that links to that Google Classroom and link assignments to that calendar, for instance. So it's not only asking which are the best tools to use and under which circumstance would you, how would you do these tasks? It's then asking you to exhibit and show that you can actually do that. And then the level two, builds much more strongly on those scenarios and there's fewer multiple choice questions. On the level two, it's predominantly scenario based. Now those three hour, they are three hour exams and you will take most likely all of those three hours purely because of the time that it takes to do the scenarios. Having said that, they are open book exams. So that means that you can have one computer while you're sat doing the exam and you can have another computer or a Chromebook sat with any research that you want to carry out. So, for instance, when I was sitting my exam on the level one, I think it was, I had to create a YouTube playlist and then distribute it to a class. Now, I've not done that before, but a quick Google search and I was able to find how to do that and then complete the exam. Google don't mind you doing that because Google is all about search for the skill and then apply it. So they don't mind you actually having that open book exam scenario. So for the exam, it's £10 for the level one and £25 for the level two. So you signed up for the exam. The certificate, the, uh, the code comes through normally within 24 hours. You've then got seven days to take the exam. If you pass the exam, you get, uh, you get notified almost instantaneously that you've passed or you've failed. And then... Um, if you do fail, you can take it within a week. If you fail again, you have to wait, I think it's a month. And if you fail it again, you then have to wait six months. And that's for both the level one and the level two certification. Next up, after you've got the exams, you'll be wanting to go to Google Certified Trainer. Now, that's got that, this one's quite a fun one to do because it's got two nice elements. Um, one, you have to write a proposal of how you're going to train others in the use of G Suite. So you have to be quite prescriptive and quite um, 
um, exact about how many people you're going to train in such a time scale and in which tools and how many uh, training sessions you're going to dedicate yourself to. So what Google asks for is a minimum of 12 training sessions per year. Now that can be a training session with one person or it can be a training person with a training session with 100 people, but it would still count as only one session. You, uh, what, what you, once you're accepted as a trainer, you've got a, a login to the Google Trainer uh, Academy and in there, you log all of the trainings that you that you do. It's quite an easy process. You can keep a spreadsheet and then you just upload that spreadsheet and it automatically completes your, your log for you. The next part of that, once you've created your proposal of how, how, how you're going to um, train and why you want to become a, a Google trainer, is you produce a three minute video showing how Googly you are. Now, this is, the, this is actually the fun element because um, for a three minute video, I think it took me 50 takes before I got it right. I had a, a script that I wanted to run through and uh, I, I, you, you talk a little bit about your education, uh, the education world that you're in and why you want to become a Google trainer and what your background is in training and then um, sort of express yourself in, in that Googly way. And the first three or four takes, I was falling over my, well, my own words. I, I, I wasn't even recognizing anything, some things I was saying, even though I had a script in front of me and I was reading off that script. But once I got over myself and realized that you know the, the mistakes don't really matter, it became a, little, a lot smoother. So you spend one minute talking about how Googly you are, and then you spend another two minutes giving an instructional demo on something. Now... I did how to create um, self-marking questions on Google Forms. And that two minutes soon disappears. You soon realize that two minutes to show somebody something is, is quite, quite difficult. So you record those, you upload them up to YouTube, and then you send off your proposal, you uh, send off the link to your Google video, to your YouTube video, and then you sit and wait for six weeks and then uh, they release the um, the the, uh, the certifications in six week in a rolling six week block. So you sit and wait for six weeks to find out whether or not you've been approved or not. Now, to be fair, to be honest, the first time I did this, I didn't actually get through. The video was fine, but in my uh, proposal, although I'd said I'd be training this and I'd be training that, I hadn't been specific with how many of and in what time scale. So that's something that I would pass on to anybody else now, is if you're going to do that, be very specific about what your expectations are around your, around your training. Next up, once you become the Google Certified Trainer, the next, is Google, the next is Google Certified Innovator. Now, this is quite a large undertaking. It's not something that you can take on lightly. It's not something that you can do in your spare time. You do have to put some time to this. And this is a way of demonstrating not only that you are able to use the tools but also that you want to make changes in practice with the tools so some of the uh, the projects that have been carried out have been things like um, upskilling third world countries in the use of technology or recycling technology or um, enabling um, students with uh, multiple disabilities to be able to uh, view the world through Google headsets and using Google Google expeditions and the like. So some of those um, challenges, so some of those proposals and uh, have been around some quite challenging ideas. You apply to join a cohort. There's a number of cohorts each year and then those cohorts are in various places around the world. So uh, London was uh, last year, there was Stockholm, there's been Copenhagen, you can go off to America. However, you do have to fund yourself to get there. So obviously, if, if we're in the UK, then you'd want to join, the, they possibly want to join the, uh, the London cohort. Uh, if, uh, if money's no object, then you might want to go off to uh, Sydney and uh, join the, um, <clears throat> the Australian cohort. There's, nothing, there's not, nothing to stop you joining one of the cohorts around the world. You then get longitudinal support around your project. So they team you up, up with somebody who's already been through this pr procedure as a mentor. And that mentor helps and guide you through, through your, your project. Uh, they help you to um, 
hone your proposal a little bit better. It might that you'll be too large or too small and they tell, help you get um, some specificity into your proposal. And then they give you support about how to get your um, your improvement out into the out into the wider world. Uh, that's not something that I've been able to do yet. The, the, the certified innovator badge is because of the time that's involved in it. It's something that uh, I haven't got involved in yet, although I did look at doing it at the beginning of this year. But that came around at the same time as the EdTech Demo, Ed Demonstrator College of Schools and Put Colleges program. So it meant that I didn't have the time to, to put to it. So I, I didn't pursue that, uh, but it's something I might do in the future. So that, that sort of covers Google really, and I'll, and I'll show you the Google platforms later on, their, their, their trading platforms. Next, aside to that, is the, the Microsoft Innovative Educator um, certification. Now, th these are quite easy to achieve. The, 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 it's free. You, you don't have to pay for anything. You, it's, it's all online, and I'll show you the, the uh, Microsoft Educator um, Academy in, in, in a second. But to achieve that, you need to create an account on the academy for which you get, I think it's 50 points or 100 points. And then you need to complete one or two modules on the Microsoft Teacher Center and answer some multiple choice questions. Excuse me. Um, there's 10 questions on each of the modules. And once you've achieved those 10 questions correctly, um, I think you need to get 80 percent. Then um, you, you've achieved that module. Now, the modules carry anywhere between uh, 250 and 2,000 points, and that's the time that they expect you to put in. So a 50 point, uh, sorry, a 500 point module is around about half an hour to an hour, and a 1,000 point module is around about an hour to an hour and a half. Now, depending upon your skills and exp experience previously, that might not take you that long. So when I was looking through some of the, the modules that, that, that I've achieved, it was taking me nowhere near an hour because if you're in the if you've been in a google environment some of the things that they're talking about are very very similar so you're able to transpose one into the other um once you've achieved that the next step up is to go for your microsoft innovator educator expert and to achieve that you have to produce a two-minute presentation or a swear presentation that demonstrates why and how you could be an MIE. So why do you want to be one? And when you have become one, uh, how, how are you going to use those tools? That, that um, how, how are you going to use that badge? What, what is it that you're going to do over and above what you're already doing? And to do that, you have to show the impact that you're going to have on yourself and your colleagues over the next 12 months. So you have to write a proposal and say those things in there, the, the why and the how, and what that impact is, is going to be. You then also have to produce that, that two minutes uh, presentation or that or the, or the swear, and then submit that to a panel. Now they only do this at certain times of the year, so I think the next time it'll open up is May next year. So, and then you've got from May until I think it's June to get your submission in. And then there's a six minute, a six minute, six week wait again for them to come back to you and say whether you have been accepted as a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. Now that is something that you have to do every year. And so it's not a badge that you keep forever, like the MIE, the MIE you can keep forever, but the MIE Expert, you do have to rebadge every year. It's just worth mentioning as well that the Google badges, they last three years. The, uh, the trainer badge you keep forever, so long as you keep up your level one and your level two. So your level one and your level two, uh, you have to um, reset that, those exams every three years. Now to get the MIE badge, you, you can achieve any of the, um, the Microsoft courses. And those courses are broken down into modules. So each module carries a number of hours or points against it. Once you've completed those points and those hours, you then achieve a badge. So for instance, you might achieve the 21st Century Learning Design Award. Now that's quite a, quite a, a chunky one. That does take a few hours. Uh, the MIE Surface Award, that could take, I, I think that only takes an hour to achieve. The, uh, the Teacher Academy Office, Teacher Academy Office 365, 
there's I think seven modules in that so that should be around about seven hours to complete but you're probably going to do it in maybe four maybe five hours so some of these you can actually do in a lunchtime some of them you can do in an afternoon and it's quite handy that a lot of them actually interrelate so some of the modules that you do in the teacher academy might actually be the same modules that, the, that you would do for the MIE surface expert um, some of the modules that you would do for the teacher academy might also be in the teacher academy for windows 10 so by achieving more modules in more of these learning pathways it actually speeds up your attainment of these badges so you're not comp uh, you're not always committing to a long-term um, work to to achieve it now the only difference here with all of the other microsoft badges is the microsoft certified educator badge to achieve that, you do actually have to sit an online exam. Now, this exam doesn't actually check your use of being able to use Word, Excel, and PowerPoint and the like. But what it does check is that you would be able to use those tools in the correct situation. So you may have come across the, uh, the four Cs or the five Cs, so collaboration, creativity, communication, and the like. And the, um, the, the Microsoft test is around those six different domains even though they actually list seven uh, is those six different domains so stem problem solving collaboration creativity communication social and emotional skills and enterprise entrepreneurship how would you use each of the tools that microsoft offer in those different environments as i say it is an online exam and that costs you 127 dollars to sit that exam at a, an approved uh, test center so that's the, probably the most awkward one to achieve because you do actually have to sit it as a, at a test centre. Now, I was quite lucky. Uh, Teesside University, with, which is who we run our foundation degrees from and our, um, a lot of our level four and level five qualifications through, they were running a number of free sessions. So I was able to achieve mine for free through their, uh, through, through their programme that they were running at that time. So that was, I, I, felt, I felt right for once. So uh, any questions before I, I show you the educator centers? Great, okay. So I'll show you the Microsoft one first. So here, the Microsoft courses are all shown. And as you can see, I'm only a, a fifth of the way through the page, but there are hundreds of courses for you to for you to complete so if i go back up to the top again if we have a look at uh, the uh, accessibility and meeting the needs of diverse learners there's a course description it's worth 500 points so it should take us around about an hour to achieve and then if we start the course you can see that the course has got a number of videos to watch um, some content to read after you've watched the videos and then a quiz for you to to complete now the quiz uh, is marked out of 10 all of the quizzes are marked out of 10 I'm not logged in so you can't see this they're all marked out of 10 so there's 10 questions and you have to achieve eight out of the 10 it's um, predominantly multiple choice or 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 options and if you fail on if you if you not if you fail that's the wrong word to use if you don't achieve the full 80 percent the first time then you can just reset the, the exam and the questions are always the same uh, i found so it's not a problem now if we go back to one of the other courses for instance let's have a look Just um, running through. Here we go. Now, th these courses are in either courses or learning paths. So, if you have a look at the learning paths, they tend to be built up of these individual courses. So, there's, if we started that learning path, for instance, you would achieve one, two, three, four, five, five badges from, uh, from Microsoft. 
they're all around about an hour, one, two, three, four, five hours. I don't think it would take you the five hours. It's probably going to be nearer three for you to achieve all of those. There are some practical aspects that you need to, to do, but they aren't graded. So you'd be able to achieve those badges in that time. And then, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of those badges would actually be part of other learning pathways. So you very quickly achieve um, certification. Next, we'll have a look at the, the Google Teacher Center. So here we have, um, it, it, there's, there's two teacher centers at the minute. Google's having a bit of a, a swap over. This is the, the new teacher center. So this is the one that you'd be sent to um, if you were a new um, person joining up. So there's the learning basics for G Suite for educator. That's the level one. And then going further with advanced training for G Suite, that's the level two. If we wanted to start the course, You can see how the course is broken down into the separate units. So getting the ready to use technology in the classroom, expanding it, going paperless, saving time, organizations, bringing meetings online. Now, as you go through each of these activities, they focus on a different Google tool. So some of them might be using Google Docs sheets and slides. Some might be using Google Docs and um, uh, some of the presentation tools. So not all of them are based around the same tools. Some of it might be using their, uh, their blogger, for instance. And then at the end, uh, again, it's built up of um, videos and written uh, tasks, and also some checks for you to review as you're going through the work. There are a number of points where it asks you to put down your thoughts and feelings. Again, that's just a place where you can add your thoughts, but they're not marked in any way. They're not, um, they don't act toward your, 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 your overall grade. So therefore, when I did the, the, my working through this, I didn't even, I didn't look at those. So that's pretty much uh, the, the plan for how you would get Google or Microsoft certified. Not, it's not onerous. It does take some time. Um, if you're already familiar with the tools, then there's not really a, a great learning curve. If you're not familiar with Google Docs, Sheets and Slides, Word, Excel and PowerPoint, then that's where you would really struggle. If you're not familiar with the tools, then you would, you, you would spend some time having to learn those. But if you're already familiar with them, then all that certification is doing is proving what you already know. So, um, as this is the last demo of the day, last presentation of the day, I'll just end with the EdTech Demonstrator uh, link. And um, if you have any questions, my name's Wayne Hall, or W Hall at darlington.ac.uk, and you can find me on Twitter at Wayne G Hall. So, before we all disappear, does anybody have any questions? <laughs>